like when I got disenchanted from programming from college, I went and did the most cool thing. And I like, I was very bullish. I was into Steve Jobs and things. Passion. If you have passion, you should follow that passion. I was not getting jobs. I remember everyone was placed in the in the in the seventh semester itself. I got my job at eighth semester, just because I wanted to get into network security. I should. <laughs> I should have understood that you know the, uh, there's coolness and then there's demand, and the coolness was not proportional to demand. So, and not knowing the real real job role, right? Like like when you see uh, uh, Arrow or something where Felicity writes a program and says, "I've written a program and is doing this matching and that matching, and I'm into the server now." Those things don't happen in real life. Like almost never happens in real life. Hi, he hello everyone. I'm going to talk about the journey of a computer science engineer. It's my journey. I am a computer science engineer. Technically, though, I graduated in information and computer uh, communications technology, ICT. But, you know, it sounds better with, as a computer science engineer. When I was marketing this talk online on, on various social media channels, I talked about three mistakes of my engineering life. And that's what I'm going to talk about, about mistakes. Uh, so that uh, you learn that everybody does mistakes and there are learnings from it. So let's let's begin uh, the talk now. OK, uh, this I have to put. These are just ideas. These are my ideas. These are personal opinions. None of this is. Uh, is uh, Microsoft's. None of this is universal. None of this applies to everyone. So listen to it, analyze it. You are a grown up person, whoever is listening, uh, and then use it at your own risk. You know, don't don't come back to me. And also my lawyer has asked me to put this on every uh, slide. So I have to do it. I hope I'm doing a good job. Why this talk? Any talk, you are, you are going to commit one hour of your time, right? Uh, why would you do that? Because as an engineer, I have made mistakes and I wish I had known better. As if you if you go to my Instagram, the bio says that uh, I want I want to be the mentor for you, which which I never had because I have made so many mistakes. I, my career ha has been so bad because of my mistakes. But now you would say, oh, you're an engineer at Microsoft. If this is bad career, what would be good career? But it could have been better. And I know this. I know it for a fact. So I have made a lot of mistakes. I wish I had someone who, who would told me, you know, not to not to do these things. Because I listen. I, I genuinely listen. But the problem is uh, no one told me that. And second is advice is dangerous. Now, this is contradictory, isn't it? So this talk is about not making mistakes, but this talk is more about my personal story, my own perspective. Because if I tell you don't do X and do Y and you listen to me and you go ahead and do X and Y without understanding how it applies to your life or why I went and said don't do X or Y, that's very dangerous. Quotes, advices, tweets, these are dangerous stuff. Because life choices has nuances. And it's very important to understand nuance of a decision, nuance of a discussion, nuance of an advice. So instead of giving advice, I'm trying to give perspective. I'm trying to talk about my life. And there are things which you can learn from my life. There are things which I have learned from my life, from my mistake, uh, mistakes. See. Uh, I'm not the most successful person out there, right? So why should you listen to me? Because you can avoid making these mistakes. That's the idea. So that's why this talk. What is this talk? We'll go through my personal journey, as I said, and re reflect on some of my learnings which you can pick up on. OK, we'll see. Hmm. This talk is special. Why? Because I have been doing online teaching for almost two years. And a lot of times I use uh, quotes and quips from my own journey to say, don't do this, do that, do this, do that, uh, don't do that, and things like that. And I have never shared my entire journey, you know, uh, how, uh, how or where I became. 
Now you would say who would be interested in that? But the thing is that uh, a lot of people do follow me on social media, and they are interested on that. So I thought, why not? You know, kill two birds with one stone. Yes. So, so I am a native Hindi speaker, by the way. So in my mind, when I am thinking, I the muhavra comes in Hindi, like ek tir se do shikar. Then I have to translate it in my mind and say, like, okay, two birds. with one stone so this talk will kill two birds with one stone ah uh, so <clears throat> scene one it's like like how do i take take one tane in college getting disenchanted with programming this is important because when i was in school and when i i even before i started programming you know some of those kids who are uh, who just love computers who to try everything uh, you wouldn't relate to it uh, because there's obviously a generation gap but 20 years back 20 uh, 15 17 years back yeah 17 years back i was so much into computer doing computer olympiad buying digit magazine and digit was costly uh, for me and then also i i i persuaded my dad that you know you need to buy me this and then trying all of that software installing operating system doing things just just wasting time but you know love for computer was amazing and then somehow i managed to get into it uh, branch as well in mit manipal uh, first year was almost zero programming i don't know why that happens in 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 engineering but then it's okay i survived that the second year when i started doing there was no programming second year we had one programming lab or i think one programming subject and there were things like a microprocessor and uh, logic circuits things like that like all theory so much theory and i'm like dude give me programming and before that when i was in when i was in you know standard 11 and 12 i i took computer science as my fifth subject and i was so damn good at it so damn good i made so many projects i knew everything about pointer double pointer uh, left to right right to left how all of these execution happens you know some of those kids who who solve those tricky questions and then marvel on that ki oh i know this now cha 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 read more than one book there was uh, one let us see yashwant kanitkar there was also some books uh, i don't remember now i think there was one more book so you know reading more books trying more things spending extra time in computer lab uh, learning with teacher nilanjan sir was my first uh, programming teacher and huge respect to him till date 15 years uh he he taught me how to learn programming and i am teaching a lot of people how to how to learn programming how he taught me and I, and i was hooked and then and then one year in uh, first year in college and then second year in college and i'm like what is this so i was super passionate but then you know college mein to i got like 7 point somehow managed 7 point even failed once Uh, there was an f f as well i remember posting about it uh, on my orkut account once that you know i had such dreams that when i go to college i'll create things i'll make things i'll 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 be an engineer when you think about an engineer right you think about you know creating things and then sending it to someone like yes they will be used like wow and then that marvel of engineering that iron man thing right that feeling that feeling was missing in the education And I remember when I posted it to a, uh, my account account, my sister read it. Uh, she's she's four years younger to me, and that time she was also thinking about which you know which which branch to take or which stream to take. And she said that when you were so passionate about computing so much, and then you didn't like uh, engineering, then I think I am not made up for engineering. And she went and became a lawyer from there. so it changed my life it changed my sister's life as well because because of it so i gave up on programming uh, i thought this is this is really boring if if instead of programming i have to do x y these things i might as well not do it and then i got into network security and i thought it was cool you know because when you look into movies almost every other engineer is like a like a network security guy and like chaka 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 and then and then there are flashing screens and all of that so it it feels like i uh, it feels like something 
Uh, getting a network security job is very difficult when you are in college because not a lot of companies hired hire for it. But I was good. Uh, one thing I have is if I put my mind into something, I go with 100% dedication. Thank God. But then I got a job in network security. So first, uh, first mistake was depending on college too much, uh, getting disenchanted with programming, thinking that college would should help me get my passion up uh, or or lighten up uh, about programming. I think that was a big mistake. Uh, over time, I've understood that colleges have limitations. If, if any of the faculty member or anybody is listening, I have utmost respect uh, for what you guys are doing, but uh, I know you guys are also limited and any student who are listening understand that colleges are not in charge of your life you are in charge of your life and this was one big mistake which i did uh, in the first two three years of college getting disenchanted with programming getting into network security and all of that stuff so <clears throat> that's mistake one serious scene two tanay in network security role uh, so I worked three years as a network security dev. I was working in Cypress Semiconductor. I was handling their Asia network. I set up firewalls. I set up uh, intrusion detection system. It's called IDS, by the way. And uh, we worked a lot with different vendors. It was fun. I, I'll be honest. Uh, it was fun thinking about it, learning about it. But then when I wanted to change to a different company, because in IT, what happens is in two to three years, in four to five years, you have to shift to get some more money, to get some more leverage, to get some more experience out of a different company. When you are when you are uh, thinking about your career, uh, you have to do that. Uh, in Microsoft, also actually, I, I do shift teams to try different things, you know, to get more exposure. When I was trying that in in India, I was getting no like absolutely no no demand. Like I went for interviews and Cypress was paying me a lot of money. And in 2012, they were paying me around 10 lakhs, which was good. And not a lot of companies pay that much money, at least to network security roles. And I'll tell you why, because it's the career ladder for a network security is, is complete with, uh, with certifications. You have to do multiple certification, your CEH, you have to do CCISP, you have to do uh, CCI security, CCNP security. So, and and certifications are again uh, theory and boring, and 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 again you have to mug up things things which I hated I landed up again in that, and there is very less programming needed to be honest in like when you see a uh, uh, arrow or something where Felicity writes a program and says I have written a programming is doing this matching and that matching and, and I'm into the server now, those things don't happen in real life almost never happens in real life. Uh, there are already programs written for you. There's a whole Metasploit kit, which you, you can use. So you don't, you don't program a lot, to be honest. I, 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 get, I got out from there. Luckily, uh, a friend referred me, strong referral went into Cisco, and I went, to, uh, went back to programming. At this time, during this time, I was doing some freelancing work, helping uh, my dad set up a, a website for his his uh, company. Also, other people setting up, you know, NGOs and all. I did did some freelancing work there while working. So I had some experience into programming. I was the spark was still alive. Uh, so I got I got into Cisco. I went through interviews. That happened. <clears throat> but learning from my mistakes. Second mistake was you know, getting behind cool stuff. Like when I got disenchanted from programming from college, I went and did the most cool thing. And I like, I was very bullish. I was into Steve Jobs and thing. Passion, if you have passion, you should follow that passion. I was not getting jobs. I remember everyone was placed in the, in the, in the seventh semester itself. I got my job at eighth semester just because I wanted to get into network security. I should... <laughs> I should have understood that you know the, uh, there's coolness and then there's demand, and the coolness was not proportional to demand. So, and not knowing the real real job role, right? Like what it shows in movie, 
Now you would be thinking, "Wow, this guy is such a fool." I was. <laughs> so if you are thinking that, thank you so much uh, for agreeing to me. So I, I was a fool doing, not understanding what the real job role is, what you do day to day. And now when when someone uh, someone asks me for advice whether I should take job X or take job Y, I always ask them talk to talk to the hiring manager and tell ask them ki. Uh, how would my day look like in x in job role x or in job role y i also have something written like this like if someone some recruiter approaches me to get a job uh, outside microsoft i ask them very clearly that can you give me like a written piece of how the job would look in day x uh, versus day y you know so yeah you make mistakes you you are a fool you learn things it's okay then i jumping into ai tuck tuck scene 3 I was wiser now. I knew I went into a field with less demand. So I went went into a field with unlimited demand. In 2015 2016 time frame everybody were like AI is the future. AI even now I mean even in 2020 people say AI is the future and AI is going to be the next big thing and uh, and people like uh, li- like uh, Google CEO and different companies were like we believe in AI. That's why we are starting this AI school. This AI that this AI that unlimited demand this time i'll not make this mistake i'll get into the right field 